was sitting in my house one day and all of a sudden my wife had this bright idea. Raheem, honey, there isn't enough light in this room for me to read. If I look at some lamps on Amazon, can we order a couple of nice floor lamps for us? Wait a minute. Why don't I make it for you? Do you really think you can make them? Really? I mean, listen, I don't want anything cheap looking. I want something very classy. And I don't want it made out of like plywood and like, you know, construction wood and stuff. I want something that's gonna look nice in the living room. I can do that. But wait a minute. What do you mean cheap looking? But I don't want something DIY. I want something different. I can do that. Okay, but no new tools for this build, okay? Okay, okay, fine. I can do that. I'll take care of it. Well, that's my interpretation of what happened and I'm sticking with it. Welcome to RV Woodworks. Today, clearly, we're gonna build a lamp. I did a bunch of research looking online to try to find a lamp that my wife would like. And would you believe I got my inspiration one day sitting at a restaurant? How, you may ask? Well, I think I had a little too much to drink. So I walked towards the washroom and I saw the sign. And I said, wait a minute. I could make a lamp that looks like a boy and a girl. And then I thought to myself, why not make it so that it also moves? like the hands, and maybe at the hips. That'd be cool, right? With that inspiration, I grabbed a bunch of 1 8 inch MDF and started to create a template. I had no idea this was gonna work, but I was determined to put something together. And with the 1 8 inch MDF templates ready, here's what I came up with. I did notice that it needed some rounded edges during that test fit. Finally, even though the washroom sign didn't have any shoes, I figured my version is going to be rocking a nice pair of sneakers. By the way, if you like what you see, consider liking the video. And if you enjoy this type of content, consider subscribing. Once I had the template for the sneaker complete, Here's what we got. A couple of different torsos, one boy, one girl. Here's the leg template, a forearm, an arm, a hip, and that hip sneaker. Now this will be a good time to let you know that I'm gonna build these two lamps with white oak. And the slabs that I got are three quarters of an inch thick. And I want this to be a little bit delicate looking, so I wanted to split the two quarts in half. But I didn't want to lose too much material. So I added a thin curved blade and a new zero clearance insert. Now if you're going to do this, take your time. The one thing I'm missing is a tall fence and I really should make one. But in order to cut these slabs in half, it took me eight runs. Slowly raising the blade until... I split the wood in half. Now I'm sure you noticed some of that burning, but a couple of runs on the planer and they were all cleaned up. The stress in the board did cause a little cupping, but since they were only a quarter inch thick, all it needed was a clamp at each end to keep it all straight. And remember, these aren't thick slabs, so a little pressure will go a long way. Gotta love that book match grain. What do you think? After just a couple of hours, the glue was dry. A little chisel work to get rid of the glue squeeze out. And then it was time to transfer the templates onto the oak. With the exception of the torso, which was predefined to be in the middle of the board, to show that book match. The rest of the pieces were fairly simple, but the only thing to keep in mind is to ensure the grain direction is continuous throughout the project. Now no build is perfect, and I make my share of mistakes, but I was so excited to get everything on these boards 
I didn't even realize that I didn't make two full legs. You see, there's only two legs here and I need four. I obviously realized it later and made them offline. Let me also tell you by this time, I had consulted with Mrs. RV Woodworks and she had approved of this project. Actually, she was pretty excited to see what it would look like. Here's an important tip for you. When using a bandsaw or even a table saw, keep your blades separate. The blade that I just took off was for the templates, which was the MDF blade. And now I'm putting on a fresh blade so that I can do oak. Also, I'm sure you noticed, but when I traced the templates onto the oak, I used a Sharpie, which gives me a nice thick line. And as long as I keep some portion of that line still on when I'm using the bandsaw, I know that with the flush trim router bit that I'm going to use shortly, we're gonna have a nice clean cut. Now, one of the stars of this build was definitely the tapering jig. I used it while making the templates and also for the oak, wherever there's a straight line. For example, on the torso or on the leg, it really helped ensure I kept everything straight. And I'm not sponsored, but I gotta tell you, MatchFit makes some incredible tools. Alright, with all the rough cuts complete, it was time to get the flush trim bit out and bring all the oak to its final dimension. Let me tell you a little bit about this router bit. It is the ultimate flush trim bit by Bits and Bits. Now it's not the Astra HP coated version that they sell now, but they didn't have that when I bought this. The cut length of this thing is one and one length. And it is a compression bit, so it's an up and down cut. It leaves the wood silky smooth. The goal here is pretty simple. Tape the template onto the oak. And the template will ride against the bearing and the wood will get cut by the bit. So I thought. Now maybe I was doing something wrong. I don't think it's the router's fault, but watch what happens. Yikes. You know, I always worry when I do small pieces on the router, but that really woke me up. And after putting on a fresh pair of pants, I decided to go another route for the rest of the curves. For the legs and arms and forearm, there is no real size, it's all relative. So why not use the sander and make them all level? Once I achieved the curve that I like and they were all level, we were all set. And like I mentioned, I did this to all the small pieces. So I have to say, the oscillating belt sander is another star of the show and it kept my pants clean too. Once all the small pieces were done, I brought the courage back to get on that flush trim bit. Again, for the torso and for the leg. This time around, no issues. And a beautiful clean cut, as you can see. And if anybody tells you double-sided tape isn't strong enough, I encourage them to watch this. I was honestly worried that I was gonna break the template. Now usually I would use a sander to break all the edges of my project. But since this is only a quarter inch thick, and I wanted some uniformity. And remember, Mrs. Woodworks said she didn't want anything DIY looking. 
I went ahead and used a 1 8 inch round over bit to bring a smooth edge to all the parts. Okay, this project is really coming along. Now the goal is to have the hardware and the wiring for the lamp go down the middle of the torso and come out from the back so that it's all hidden. And so that's what I'm gluing up here. But notice that the hip will not be glued and rather screwed so that the entire torso can move left and right. And did the same for the second lamp. And I wasn't kidding when I said that I was winging this project. I'll let Raheem in the moment explain. Okay guys, here's where we're at. We have both the male torso glued up. You saw that here a second ago. Female torso also glued up. Inside here, we have the pivot point that we're going to use. The legs are also ready. The legs will go here. And then we have the forearm and the arm ready as well. And that'll go inside and we'll create a pivot point so that we can move the arm up and down and, so, and also here. What I haven't put in the plan that I wanna discuss with you guys here right now is how the feet are gonna work. So, if we get rid of the arm and forearm for a second and let's concentrate here on the legs. So the way the legs are going to work is that I have two shoes that's going to be sandwiched between these. Again, already discussed that. Where we are at now is that I need to create a piece inside here between the two shoes so that it has more stability and more width so that when I screw this in, and the goal here is to cut three quarter inch plywood, two of them for the base, glue them together and then screw it from the bottom. Now, a quarter inch, which all these pieces are quarter inches thick, is not enough. So if I do quarter inch, quarter inch, that's a half an inch, and then I add another quarter inch in the middle, that gives me three quarters of an inch, and from there I can screw in a couple of screws, and I think that's gonna be stable enough for the lamp to stand up without having any issues. So let's give that a go. We'll go ahead and cut those, and we'll continue our build. You know, by this point, I was about 85% sure this was going to work. But I pressed forward and made those pieces. Also, an inch and a half away from the blade is too close. Shame on me. If you're going to do this, clamp it down instead of using your hands. Alright guys, I have this contraption here, quote unquote a jig. Uh, let me just explain this real quick. Now, like I mentioned, I put this piece of wood between the two shoes, but I do want the, sh the wood to drop all the way to the bottom and all the way to the back. And in order to do that, I have this jointed piece of oak here, which I know is straight. So when I put this here, I'll be able to push in and make sure it's touching the oak here, and then take the piece, put it inside, and then take the next shoe, put it after that, and I know that it's sitting level against the clamp and pushed against the oak. Therefore, it's going to be positioned correctly. I'm not sure if I did the best job there explaining, but basically I'm doing the same thing that I did with the torso, creating width so that I could drill and have stability. By this point, I was about 90% sure this was going to work. Now what I was about to do next was going to make or break this project. Honestly, it was as simple as drilling a slightly angled hole upwards, but it was stressful. Thankfully, nothing went sideways and all was well. With that complete, to 
both the torsos, it was time to permanently install the nipple into the top. Now I used a bit of CA glue. And here's a trick for you. If you put in two bolts together or two nuts together, when they combine together and they get the opposite force to each other, they lock themselves into place and they're very easily removable as well. By this point, I was feeling really comfortable. Probably about 99% sure this project is gonna turn out well. Really, all that was left to do was to drill a hole the size of the nut, or in this case, a T-bolt that I was gonna use and assemble the lamps together. That was my first real view of the project and I was really excited. Moving forward, all I continued to do was drill those holes in the shoes, in the forearm, and in the pivot, which was the hip. And to ensure I had consistency, I took all the forearms and drilled them all at once. As I described earlier for the base, it's about as simple as it can be. Cut the pieces down to their final dimension. And to have a nice, modern, non-DIY look. I put a nice big chamfer on the bottom side. And to make it classy, I brought out the eighth inch roundover bit again and broke all the edge and gave it a nice roundover. And to prep the project for the stain, I gave everything a nice sanding. And for those pieces that are too small, I hooked up the sander upside down and brought the project or the piece to the sander instead of bringing a sander to the piece. With all the sanding complete, it was time to stain the project. Note the plastic under just to ensure I protect my tabletop. And for this project, since this was white oak, I decided to go with hard wax oil. Osmo to be exact. 2K wood oil number 6111. Now as you might be aware, this is about as idiot proof as it gets. Single coat with a hardener to ensure I don't have to wait a week for it to dry. And man, does this stuff go a long way. To coat both the floor lamps, I only used two and a half tablespoons of the hard oil and one teaspoon of the hardener. Now I've seen people apply this without any protection, but I care about my lungs so I use the respirator and the application is so simple. Simply rub it in, wait a few minutes, probably between 15 and 20 minutes, come back and rub it right back off. You know, when it comes to white oak, I love that whitish colored look. It really brings the grain out. And when it came time for buffing, I used a Scotch-Brite pad, connected it to my sander, and went at it. For the smaller pieces, of course, I had to do it by hand. Again, left it alone for a few hours, came back, took a clean cloth and wiped it all down. And the staining was complete. Now, probably I should have done this before I stained the project. But truth be told, I forgot. And like I said, I'll never hide a mistake from you. But no harm was done. It was all good. 
It was as simple as pre-drilling four holes per lamp and then screwing in the shoes. Now initially the goal was to have the knob showing in the front, but Mrs. RV Woodbrooks had other thoughts. She thought that the T-bolt would look better on the outside. What do you guys think? Leave a comment below and let me know. I'd love to hear from you. At this point, I would have had to do something pretty stupid to mess up this project. But last thing that was needed to be done was to put in the hardware for the lamp. Now I'm no electrician, but this isn't very difficult. There's no positive negative. Either wire can go on either side. But the one suggestion I can give you, when you're hooking the wire to put around the screw, make sure the hook turns in the direction that you're gonna turn the screw. This will ensure that as you tighten the screw, the hook goes inward instead of turning the opposite direction and coming out again. I hope that made sense. With the lampshade being the final touch, I think I can finally call this project complete. What do you guys think? Does it look DIY? Does it look classy? And it's not that difficult, and I'm sure you can do it as well. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys in the next build.